be able to do it today. Um, so we're going to talk about the final aspect of Project 3 that I haven't been able to get to in any detail today. That is namely reading in the exceptions file and how to deal with that. Uh, but of course, I do want to field your questions first, so lay them on me. Or not. Yes. Uh, so the question is, knowing that there is uh, an employee, a vector of employee pointers in Depot, and the question whether any sort of vector needs to be an employee, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, there does not need to be a vector and employee, but as we'll see today, the employee will have a set, and that's to hold exceptions. So that's, stuff, that's specifically what I'll talk about today. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, in the rubric for project three that we do on Friday, I would like to talk about the project three that we do. Yeah, let's look at that. I, I have to confess that I didn't give it a real thorough read when I made it visible. So let me make sure that everything here is relevant. You were looking at the rubric or the write up or both? The rubric. All right. Understood. So let me look at the rubric. All right. Uh, compiles and runs, source and headers, reach class. Why can't I get that to? Oh, I might hang on. My computer's really stressing out here, and I'm not sure why. Let me quit some stuff. See if I can get this thing to calm down. There, there we go. I think that, I think that was the deal. All right. I am recording. Yes. There's some runaway thing in one of my web pages there. So, um, anyway, we are here. Compiles, it runs, separate source file and header files. Employee class has a set of integers as private data to store exceptions. I'll be talking about that today. Depot has a vector of employee pointers. Uh, talked about that last time. Uh, employee class has an add exception member function. Going to talk about that today. Uh, Employee constructor uses an initialization list. That should be true of any constructor. Uh, I guess the reason it's not mentioned for depot is there's no private data that requires an initialization list. So that's why depot isn't mentioned. Uh, depot constructor reads in the employees, creates employees, puts them on a vector. Talked about that on Monday. Depot constructor reads in the exceptions from the file. We'll talk about that today. Did I say Monday on that? Monday, today. Depot destructor loops through employee vector and uses delete to release memory allocated to each employee. I think I talked about that on Monday, but I'll, I'll mention it again today. I did or did not? You did. Yeah. Okay. Good. Depot has member function assignment right depot has a member function named assignments report which prints the report header and iterates through employees displaying each okay, yes so that, is, this is a correct. that that is correct okay. yes. yeah but admittedly there are a couple things that I haven't really talked about that I'll 
catch today. Any other questions? Yes? Oh, man. Oh, shoot. All right, I apologize for that. Yeah, the, unfortunately, this tool has like three different things that I have to set just right for you all to see it. And if I don't get all three, there you go. It'll be visible to you now. So that... that it gives you a laundry list of what you need right there. <laughs> but all this stuff should become, should be evident by virtue of going through the sequence diagramming. The exception would be the stuff I'm going to talk about today, which would flush out this one and this one. Um, yep. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, let's plow forward then. about right okay I want to erase So this is a, I'm, I'm borrowing the same header. This is a different sequence. This is sequence is for <clears throat> part of the constructor. So I guess I should have left that arrow there. Let me do this. Let me, I'll stick with red. I'll put that there and I can't write there. So I'll put a little arrow pointing to my arrow. And that is the constructor. So when you create depot, it's going to run this code. There's a whole bunch of code here that the idea of putting a button on the side of the pen is really clever until the point where you actually want to use the pen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want the one with the touch screen. I, I look like my my father's gotten so accustomed to using 
his iPad that when I put my computer in front of him, he starts poking at the screen. <laughs> so no, no touch screen for me. I don't want to. Didn't you hear that's the next wave? Yeah. Actually, it's oh, are they going to make the MacBooks with the touch screen? <clears throat> All right, well, I'll be a Luddite and not go into that. Um, all right, I, I need to actually pay attention to what I'm doing. That arrow has nothing to do with nothing. All right, so... I do I need an arrow? The first part of this constructor is, in essence, a bunch of stuff I did on Monday. So we have code to read in employees. And that that's one word. Um, what it did, well, let me see if I'm able to at least point out what it was doing. We're not dealing with the equipment. So this one isn't used in project three. This isn't used in project three. Bob's tools isn't used in, boy, look at this. <laughs> okay. This is it's looking mighty Spartan now. So I'm, so I'm gonna re I'm gonna repurpose this one. <clears throat> and this will be Bob's exceptions. And this is a set. That's the kind of thing that it is. So there's a relationship between Bob and Bob's exceptions. I guess I started here trying to find stuff uh, that I did on Monday that I could kind of illustrate with arrows, but it looks like most of the stuff I need isn't on here. Uh, basically, it would be reading. There's a whole bunch of stuff here without arrows where I open up the file, I read in three fields, and then if, if I was to actually show it, what I'd do is I'd have, I'd have notation here about reading in the file whatever made it obvious. And then I'd have uh, an arrow going here, which would be the create, right? And this is, this is actually the constructor that I'm running. So I'm creating an employee using new. And then it would immediately return control back to me. So that's a real simple constructor with just an initialization list to initialize the, the three variables inside the employee. Once I've created it, then I need to, so any, uh, any sequence diagram jockeys out there want to tell me where my next arrow goes, it starts here, so that's where my control is. After I've, I, this is where I say new employee, and then I do my silly drawing of the catcher's mitt, and a pointer to that employee comes back to me. Once I have that pointer to the employee, what do I do with it? That's it. Uh, before I added exceptions. So I'm in the I'm in the loop for reading in employees. I just want to see check for understanding here. After I have that employee pointer, what do I do with it? Hmm? No, 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 no. This is the beginning part of the constructor. I open up employees.txt. I start a while loop. In that while loop, I'm reading in three vari three variables. And then I'm calling new employee. So this is very similar to what I did on Monday with the date, right? I read in a day, month, and year. Then I created a new date. What do I do with that employee after I create it? Put it on workers, right? Workers is private data of the depot. Yes, that's a, this is a vector. That's the kind of thing that that is. That, and that's private data of depot. So I can go ahead and after I get that employee, excuse me, I went too far, created using new, then depot talks to its private data. And what is, what do I say? What do I say? Pushback, exactly. Yeah, good. Push back. Uh, 
Right, and, and I probably have some notation here that it's the employee pointer that I'm passing as an argument. These sequence diagrams translate fairly closely to code. I'm sending, one way of saying this is I'm sending the pushback message to the worker's object. Another way of saying it, more C++ ask, is I'm calling the pushback member function of the worker's vector, something like that. But it translates to code as workers dot pushback in that pointer. Okay. Uh, it's going to do whatever it does under the hood. We neither know nor care. In fact, uh, you would never go to this much detail in a company for drawing a sequence diagram because the assumption would be that every programmer there was pretty fluent in the language and they had a very clear understanding that you're going to be adding this to the vector. So you wouldn't have to go through that trouble. Control comes back here and then this this whole thing is in a loop. So what I'll do is I'll just um, all right, this, this whole thing is a, a loop. This is a loop. That's reading in the employee file. So now We've read in all the employees out of the file, which in our example file is three, but it could very well be a thousand. Who knows how many workers are in the file? And it'll push back that many workers onto the vector. Yes, onto the workers vector. That many employees onto the workers vector. So now we have to deal with the exceptions. So let's look. There it is. This is exceptions.txt. This is the format of it. And you can look through the project materials. In one of those emails, they describe what each field is. But can you visually look at it and tell what it is? Exactly. The first field is the ID number of an employee. And the second field is the do I call it an inventory number? Inventory number of a piece of equipment. And what does that mean? So what does it mean for 8849 and 192 to be tied together? That's correct. The employee number 8849 is allowed to use a, uh, the piece of equipment with inventory number 192. And the presumption is that employee 8849 has a grade that's lower than that required to use 192, right? And therefore, this is an exception. So the 8849 may have a grade of 2, and 192 may have a grade required of 5. This is saying that this is an exception, and despite the fact that employee 8849 doesn't have the requisite grade, that employee is allowed to take that piece of equipment. Okay? Now, uh, you can see that some of these, there's two right here and here's one right here, 8823. This employee has three entries in this file, employee 8823. So we need, a, we need a mechanism where we can have an employee um, be, have a relationship with basically one or more exceptions. So it looks like a couple of them have one, one of them has three. Um, and the question is, how do you represent that? Now, I'm for, the solution generally is the employee should have some sort of container to store the exceptions. And by container, I mean a vector, a set, uh, something, uh, a container is actually a, a formal description of um, something in the standard template library, and there's several of them. There's map, multi-map, set, list, vector, uh, that goes on and on, and you can look at the references. And a very real question that you would have at this point is, how in the world would I know which of these I want to use? And really, the, the short answer to the question is, each of them have strengths and weaknesses, 
and you start to learn about the various strengths and weaknesses in 2.11. So in 2.11, you start looking at how these structures are, are structured. <laughs> and, um, and you learn about why some are better for some situations and some are better than other situations. So I acknowledge that you don't necessarily have that information at hand. So I'm going to push your hand a little bit and say the type of container you want in this situation is a set. And you can think of a set as a bag that just holds a bunch of stuff and it's different from a vector in that a vector everything is well ordered. If I say give me the third item from the vector you can do that for me easily. If I ask you to give me the third item from the set that has no meaning at all. A set is just a bag of stuff and it has no particular order to it. Okay. So, uh, given that Bob then needs to have a set, that ends up being private data. So in addition to Bob having a name, a grade, and an ID, Bob also has a set of exceptions. That set may be empty, that's fine. That set may have 30 exceptions in it, that's fine as well. Okay. But given that Bob does have uh, a set of private data, that means that Bob is able to talk to that set, which means I'm allowed to have arrows going from Bob to the set. Just as the depot has a worker vector's private data, therefore I'm allowed to have my depot code talk directly. Oops, I did that at the wrong place. I'm able to have my depot code talk directly to the workers vector because it's private data of depot. And in fact we saw the very similar thing in the Joust project where I had arrows going from the knight to the weapon because the weapon was private data of the knight. And that was represented in the role play when we had everyone up here with the knight physically turning to the weapon and saying did you hit, right? There's, you're able to have direct interaction Question? No, okay. All right, any questions to this point? So, what we have to resolve is how then do we process this file? And uh, I'll give to you that the general outline is very similar to every other file we've been dealing with, which is you open it, you create a loop, and you read each line. Okay? So in this case, a line is just an employee ID and an exception number. So I can, I can write that. Uh, so here, open exception exceptions dot text and then I'm going to have a loop. I'll go ahead and use consistent. Here's my loop and in my loop I'm going to read in uh, employee ID and inventory ID. So once I read in those two pieces of information, what do I need to do and how am I going to do it? I've got an employee ID, so I've just done, I've gone my first time through the loop, I've got a variable with that in it, I've got a variable with that in it. What am I going to do with them? Say that again? Add it to the set. Whose set? You, let's use a specific example here. Whose set do I need to add? What do I need to add to the set and whose set am I adding it to? You have to add 192 to the employee whose ID is 8849, right? Where are all my employees stored? In the workers vector, yes? So how I, I, we don't know how many employees are in that vector. Let's say there are a thousand employees in that vector. How are you going to find the right one? Yeah. 
what was that? If id equals, okay. So let's, um, I don't know where to do this. Uh, so we need, we need some statements somewhere like if id is equal to the id, the employee id from file. All right, this is kind of the pseudocode I need. I need this at some point. Where is that coming from? Data from the employee class, yes, and I heard a get ID function. So I can do that. I can so let me let me put a line here. We're gonna modify it just a little bit. Um, I need a little more real estate. I'll put this here. Something like this, get ID. Now, so get ID, given that I've written the arrow this way, what does that tell me about the employee class? Bob is an employee. Get ID is a member function of the employee class. Any arrowhead, any solid arrow ending at one of these lines indicates that that particular class has that member function. Yes? Vector has pushback. Uh, employee has a constructor. I guess that's all we have here. Uh, employee has a get ID function. Is that is this complex code right here? How many lines of code do you think are in that function? Yeah, one or two, depending on how, how painful you want to stretch it out. One, one, you can do it in one, return ID. There you go. I just told you what the source of that function is. Yeah? Not too hard. Like, it's exactly like the weapons get stamina required. What was the line of code for get stamina required? Return stamina required. Yeah, if someone asks you for it, just give it to them. Don't, don't do any song. You could, if you want, put a little see out statement there. Here you go. I'm about to give you the, you know, but don't do that. Um, so I, I want to get the ID from Bob, but here's the rub. I, it, my code is incomplete at this point because depot at the moment that this, the way I've written it, Depot does not have a relationship with Bob, right? When we have to have an established relationship in order to talk. Just that, remember me saying that a few moments ago? The Depot, which is this big chunk of stuff over here, has a relationship with the workers vector. That's why I can draw an arrow going all the way to the workers vector, because I uh, have this as private data. Now you may ask, well what about this Todd? There's an arrow going here from depot to the employee, but here I'm creating a relationship in essence. I'm creating uh, I'm creating the employee out of whole cloth, bringing it into existence, and now I, I have it, right? So by virtue, you can create things, and, and by virtue of creating it, you're talking to it. However, by the time I get down here, I no longer have a direct way of talking to Bob, because what I did is here I created Bob, and I have Bob in my hand, but then what I do is I give Bob to the vector, and I forget all about Bob. So now it's the vector that knows about Bob, right? So before I can talk to Bob, what do I need to do first? Uh, talk to the vector, I heard, and that's correct. So what I'm going to do is take this. Uh, all right. This will work. My little Frankenstein diagram here. Mm -hmm. Little change in color on that one. That's all right. Spring, the spring fashions and sequence diagrams are coming out. Um, so I need to. I can talk to Bob only if I get Bob from the vector. How am I going to get Bob from the vector? Give me the general strategy. How many? 
Is Bob the only thing in this vector? No, there are a bunch of them. So I can't get them all at once. I have to get them one at a time. How do I get things one at a time out of a vector? You just loop through it, yeah? If you want to display them, you loop through it, ask each one to display. If you need to access each one and get their ID, you got to create a loop. So, um, I guess I'll use this. I need another, so here's an internal loop inside of this big green loop. And I got to make all my, I apologize for Tato vision here. It's, um, but I, I have an inner loop inside of this outer loop. The outer loop is in green. The inner loop's in this light gray. This outer loop's the big while loop for reading in the file, right? Read in an employee ID and an inventory ID. It'll loop back up, read in another employee ID and an inventory ID. So the question is, once I have the employee ID and the inventory ID, what am I going to do? I'm going to create another loop, and I am going to loop on workers. And then if I want to, again, this is detail that you normally wouldn't do in a production shop because it's, it's assumed at that point, but I want to make it explicit for us here since we're kind of in the early stages of understanding this. Oh, come on. There we go. I want to talk to workers and uh, maybe I'm doing, maybe, I just do not have enough real estate. I'm going to put it right here. I want to get the ith item. And then it's going to dot, 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 dot. It's going to come back to me. And once I have it here, the ith item is Bob. Now I can talk to Bob. Right? And the next time through the loop, the ith item is going to be Jane. And that's going to, I'd have to draw another box and have Jane out here. And I'd talk to Jane the second time around. So once I, I get Bob, then I say get ID. The ID is returned, so I guess I should be explicit about that. The ID is given back to me. And once I have the ID, and now I'm, I think I can move this. How does this work? I can move it over here. Oh, oh. Yeah, we'll draw a ninja. Uh, green. Light gray. Give me a little more loop here. So now I have the ID, now I have the if statement. So I'll say if, and I'll put a little star right here. Oh, I'll do the star in a different color. Let's do the star in red. The star means, please refer to this text at the star. So your eyeball goes up here and goes, aha. Now, what if it's true? <coughs> add the exception. So who do I talk to to add the exception? Yes, employee. The specific employee is Bob. So I'm going to start, I'll use my made up little sequence diagramming language here. If it's true, then I'm going to talk to Bob and I'm going to say add exception. And this would be the ID from file. So therefore, I once again, oh darn it, I didn't get it quite far enough, did I? Hang on. Mm. 
needs to go right there. So I tell Bob to add this exception to your set of exceptions. When Bob is asked to do that, I think I just need to erase this. It's taking it's cramping my style. Now, what does Bob do when Bob's asked to add an exception and is given a number? Now Bob, remember, Bob has the set as private data, so now Bob talks to the set and says whatever it is you say to a set to add another item. It's like <laughs> add or insert, something like that. Is it insert? Yeah. All right. So that means that the cert, the, the cert, the set class has a member function called insert. So add exception takes a number and insert takes a number. I have an arrowhead going to Bob's exceptions, which is a set. So this is just telling you that the set class must have an insert member function, just as the vector class has a pushback member function. And then it's a little incomplete. I've got a dashed line coming back here. I have a dashed line coming back here. Excuse me. This has to. I need to be extending these loops a little bit. But then that ends that inner loop. Yes. So this will be part of what we turn in. This will be part of what you turn in. Yes. This is part of project three. Now the interesting thing is, so you have to add the exceptions to uh, Bob's set of exceptions, or generally the employee exceptions, right? You have to read in that file and get the exceptions in the right place. But we don't do anything with them in this project. They don't display in the report. There's no processing. You basically just fill those exceptions up, and then we use them in project four. Yes. So then how would you check like the syntax? Uh, what I would do, so if I was to write test code, what I would do is I would, um, what I'd probably do is, well, it's a good, you know, there are a number of ways of doing it. So here's one way of doing it. Uh, I would create a member function in Depot called Sanity Check. And what Sanity Check would do is print out a bunch of statistics to me, a bunch of see out statements. And so I, then in my code, right, if w on Monday I showed what main looked like, it was depot D and the D dot assignments report. I might, between the two, at least while I'm testing, I'd put in D dot sanity check. And I'd look at that output. And what I, the sanity check function would do is I would have it loop through the employees. And I might, I guess I'd have a sanity check function for the employee as well. And what the sanity check function for the employee would do is maybe print out how many items are in the exception set, maybe print out the employee ID and how many exceptions they have. And I'd hope to see something that looks similar to this, where it would print out 8849 and say 1, 8823 would say 3, because I have 1, 2, 3 exceptions for that employee, 1 ex exception for this employee. Um, and confirm that those numbers match up with what I have in the file. So that would be one way of testing it. And, I, I, and actually, you know, that's a, a very excellent question, and I can't emphasize enough how you have to be writing test programs all along the way, uh, just like that. There's a tremendous, as a, as a software engineer, there's a tremendous amount of code that you write that you end up throwing away because you just need it temporarily to test something. Uh, this do, it does. Uh, that being said, there are actual methodologies uh, like uh, TDD, test-driven development, where what you do is you write a little bit of test code, 
and then you stub out everything, and so the test code fails right off the bat, and then you have to basically write all the code for this until your test succeeds. And then you go, okay, what's the next functionality I need? Well, I need to add exceptions to employee. Okay, let me write some t uh, test code to check it. And then so what I'd do is I'd stub out the sanity check functions, and then I'd have to actually write in the sanity check functions, make sure it all works. And uh, So there is actually a method of development where you write little tests and then write code to make the tests work. Um, but it just goes to show that writing tests to make sure your code works, tests that aren't in the final application, is a very real part of software development. And that's why you see me, whenever I'm writing code up here, that's why generally you see me quitting out of that editor every two to three minutes to compile just to make sure everything's working. Yes? No, it's inserting to where the arrowhead goes. The arrowhead is going to Bob's exceptions, which is a set. So, Bob, so Bob's at Bob's at exception member function is inserting into his private data his set called exceptions. And to get back to if you ever want to see if your code is correct, or not your code, if you ever want to see if your sequence diagram is correct, you should be able to trace this entire sequence without picking up your pen. So I call a function, it returns, I call a function, it returns, I do a bunch of stuff. It's hard to do this with loops, but at least one iteration of the loop. I do this, it returns, I get the ID, it returns, I do an if, if that if is true. I jump down here, I jump down here, I come back, I come back, and I never had to pick up my pen. Okay. And that's how a computer program works, right? You go back to, to take an easy example, go back to assignment three with the red light, green light thing. You should be able to, with your finger, look at that source code, and you should be able to go from the beginning of it to the end of it. And in the later assignments where you add functions, Here's a function call. I come up here, I call the function, then I come back to the beginning, right? There's one flow of control. Nothing just, nothing's detached. You should be able to follow your program from beginning to end, regardless of complexity. Other questions? Word of the day, yes. I do want to make uh, one editorial statement is that uh, that is very exciting to me, and that is that I've seen a tremendous, this class really more so uh, than other classes has been very collaborative. There's been a lot of public announcements about meeting in the library to kind of hash through stuff. I just want to give you the, if I had three hands, I'd give you the triple thumbs up. That's totally awesome. That's exactly what you all need to be doing is working together. Um, not only because it, it helps your understanding with this stuff, but also because for those of you who are computer science majors, uh, you're going to be in a lot of the same classes for the next two to four years, and uh, it's really good at, at uh, building some relationships for getting through the classes moving down the road. So hats off to you for doing that. You make me proud. <clears throat> All right, today's word. Defender. Hey, I, I sucked at Defender. I'm, uh, I'm a kind of game player who likes to figure out deterministic ways of winning, where I can do like patterns to win every time. In Defender, you actually have to have some skill. <laughs> and so I never was good at that, but it's, it's a good game. So with that, I will see you on Piazza. And I'll see you the Tuesday, Thursday lab tomorrow morning.